always give any members of this public a, an opportunity to make a up to three minute comment if they choose to. You can. Uh, sure. Okay. <laughs> but you've got plenty of time as well at, at 455. Yeah, well. I mean, I'm I'm here per invitation uh, of Lily. Thank you, Lily. Um, and basically, I'm just here to um, get to get to know people. And um, you know, I, I am new to Northampton. I'm a resident of Conway, um, and uh, I've worked with Bartlett Tree Experts for three years now, uh, maybe four years now. But anyway, Bartlett Tree Experts just acquired Seal Frank and Company, a local local company on a, on a King Ave. And, uh, oh, excuse me, Cook App, and um, we're still the same, Same, we, we still have all the same employees, all the same boots on the ground, uh, I am the only new face in that office. Um, you know, everyone you know that worked for CL Frank is still there, uh, and we're just uh, doing business as CL Frank and Vision Department Tree Expert. And in fact, Chris Frank is still there. <laughs> so he beats me there every morning. I, I'm there about 5.30 every morning. He, I don't know what time he gets there. <laughs> so, wow. so, old habits are hard to break, I guess. But um, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm here. I'm excited. Um, you know, uh, I'm excited to, you know, with Bartlett, I, we, we have a few resources at our fingertips that weren't necessarily, you know, at CL Frank's fingertips. Um, so we're excited to continue his great customer service tradition and uh, as well as providing um, outstanding arboricultural services yeah. with a few more resources at our fingertips. So. Wonderful. So that's me in a, in a nutshell. So. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and we'll circle back. Carolyn, did you want to join us? Um, just whenever you're ready. Okay, okay, you're welcome to sit at the table. Okay. All right. Oh, so you're on the agenda. <laughs> Told me to make the agenda. That was awesome. I, 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 I don't want to be there. No, I am thrilled. And, and at the last meeting, we had requested Rich right. to put you on the agenda, but I somehow didn't reach the agenda close enough. Well, that was so well, well, two weeks ago. Well, yeah, I worked, yeah. I worked really hard last on that. Year. I'm disappointed yeah. that you didn't catch it. <laughs> you know, it's it's at the last line. And it's it's like in a very hard to see place. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, this okay. is great. Okay, I'm I'm thrilled. Um, okay, so then the next item is approval of minutes for the last meeting. So, we do that with, oh, I have to see something there. Okay. We do that with three people. Um, yes, because an extension is a vote. Yeah. yeah. Of our minutes. Look at this. This is just one, one and a half hour meeting. Aren't they impressive? Don't we have the best note taker in the whole city? Absolutely. <laughs> I'll take that for the plan. Okay. 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 Thank you. 
and Carolyn, if it helps you in preparation for the conversation we're going to have, mm -hmm. the meeting minutes on page four and five talk about the ordinance revisions. No, great, thank you. Okay. Um, one slight little typo on page six. Page, page six here. I go subcommittee report, phantom, phantom, subcommittee. The third bullet. Uh, Marilyn suggested that the Arbor Day phantoms be near, not near. Oops. Mm -hmm. yep. Spell check. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone ready to make a motion on this? I'll move to accept the minutes. As amended with the typo. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. And Rob is abstained. Okay. Great. Um, chair report. Well, one thing that jogged my memory that I wanted to report to you, Rich, is that you know we had referenced <laughs> the trees we planted on the property at South and Olive Street. One of them is gone. One of them was ripped. It, it looks like they they either had a heavy vehicle come through or something. But um, I noticed that one of the trees it looked like it had been uh, not neatly removed, as in maybe run over or something like that. Um, As so, the, the setbacks. Yeah, mm -hmm. the setbacks. Uh -huh. I, I believe those are not. Those are, those are not under agreement. Yeah. Record, recorded agreement. These were on south or on south on all. Well, it's um, it's south. Yeah. So it was okay. the year that, that preceded the new policy mm -hmm. of I think right. making arrangements. But then there were setback trees. There were setback trees. There were. What were they? Oh, I think they were Ginkos. Yeah. Yeah. And they were uh, two on either side of the walkway to the house. Yeah. yeah you probably planted them yourself. Yeah. yeah. One of them was destroyed. Okay. I'll speak so, to the senior planner about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. We were hoping, it's so funny because we were hoping to rescue them and just pull them out if, if the property owner wasn't intending on wanting them there. Uh, yeah. But they're in the right of way. Right. No. Oh, yeah. No, they're not. They, they were they were setback trees that we planted under our old agreement, uh, which okay. we found out afterwards was not actually a binding agreement. Okay. So since then we have an agreement we have to file at the Registry of Deeds. No, it was a verbal agreement. But it's a verbal agreement, it, but I just it was a written agreement, but it, was, really it only lasted for two years. Oh, well, yeah. it hasn't been two years. That's not sure. It hasn't been? I don't think so. No. No, no. it's true. Did the ownership change at that time? Did it transfer? I think it's been a month, just over a year. Yeah. Months. And if the ownership changed, then it's just not, it's, you know, it's not well, right. We could possibly, Carolyn and I could have a discussion about just making that one of the conditions that we are able to go on a property and take, because that whole house is being knocked down, I believe. It, it's under the not anymore. Well, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, not for the time being. Everything's okay. in flux, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this yeah. property we're talking about is it a house that might be, oh, yeah, where so the, the house one, had the fire damage. Yeah. No, yeah. no. Okay, so it's the one where they're proposing a, 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 a mini unit conversion. Yeah. Is there an address? It's 
236, I think. So, four of olives and three olives. Well, I'll just go see if something can be done about the tree. Yeah, it's, it's you know, there's this much of this of the trunk. We'll just see if the owner might buy us another one. Yeah. Okay, um, other things in the tree report. Let's see. Yes, I got Christina Bizanson on our. Um, our agenda for the next meeting and you know she is to remind you in our horticulture lecture at UMass lifelong career of um, uh, work with trees um, in, at a municipal capacity as, as a um, landscape designer um, urban forester so if there's and she is because she's a lecturer she helps prepare presentations so if there is a topic that you would like her to share with us, she'd be happy to put together something that's tailored, you know, fit for our curiosity. So, but let me know, be thinking about that and let me know as you something with fun. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the I would think if I think I'm I'm thinking more um, on the ground um, stuff okay. than you know. Yeah. 30,000 um, and then tree speak right now the ball is in Madeline's court the trouble that she's having is just getting the um, uh, Smith to to do the audio recordings she's just having to arrange that and she's having a hard time getting them to um, let her use their equipment so that's she, she knows that um, that's the next thing that needs to be done and then then I think the ball's back into our court with making the, no, Smith is going to make the actual the, the labels. And then we're going to install them. Yeah. Yeah. And I are going to install them. Yeah. And we'll, um, we'll make sure we do a press release for it. Okay. Make a little right. thing out of it. Do you think it's in time for birthday? I think it's very reasonable to say it would be in time. Yeah. I mean, the, the website is, the website is, the web pages, I should say, are all built and they really look very nice. Yeah. Lily and I got to preview them. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. The content's so really, great. Yeah. It's really just a matter of actually adding the audio and then actually uh, Mal and I just going out and yeah. uh, trying to get the mm -hmm. work done on, yeah. on the trees. And this work. is, um, so Smith College is, is a, an arboretum mm -hmm. and so they label all their trees and they label them with QR codes that lead one to an audio recording about that tree and so we piloted doing a small portion of trees like that in a collaboration with smith headed up by a high schooler on a minute okay so uh that's it for the chair report so i don't really have a lot to report other than i am still uh so the uh, tree the last meeting i spoke to you about the tree that was illegally removed at 115 bridge street that i've been after the aspen realty is the company that actually is charged with selling the property because i believe it's in foreclosure so they reached out to me a few times over the holiday break and asked for forgiveness and i told them no they're Fortune has no forgiveness. <laughs> so they took it upon us and they sent an email to the mayor's office today. So I sent the mayor's office all the email correspondence that I've had with them since then. You mean just asking for, for, for forgiveness? Forgiveness. And I, my emails are very self explanatory that you left two other public shade trees that were a little larger, didn't touch them, but you happened to cut this one down for whatever reason. So we're going to find stands at 500 bucks. That's it. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll see. Well, I'll try to have a conversation with the mayor. I did speak to court client, uh, uh, executive, assist, executive assistant. Assistant. Yeah. Yes, sir. Would it normally be you know, some kind of deviation from placement? No, it's uh, Mass General Law says it's uh, up to five hundred dollars per tree or six months in jail. Yep, yeah. makes it really simple. We didn't do any deviation replacement back then, so I'm asking for five hundred bucks. Okay. I'm not even, I'm not, I'm really, because I'm demanding to get you with your leaders. Should I, I mean, Connecticut, so there's people that came and did the work from Connecticut, and Connecticut has very similar public shade tree laws as Massachusetts, so really, you can't use the excuse that you didn't know that it protected trees in the tree belt. The tree belt's only about 15 feet wide there, so I mean, it's kind of a no brainer. I mean, yeah. but. Okay. Yeah. All right. We support you. Yes. 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 
Um, the other thing too is that there is a series of tree talks. I don't know if anyone does anyone get this. Uh, the uh, citizen forester. Yeah. So there's a bunch of tree talks in here. It's on page eight if you do get it. That are being sponsored by the Plainfield Tree Alliance. Oh. Um, there is five of them, and um, it's pretty interesting. Uh, All in Plainfield. To be honest with you, at Town Hall. Yeah, oh. yeah. I mean, they're, they're in the afternoons. Uh, most of them, some are in the evening. So is that the group that reached out to us originally about wanting to form a, a tree commission? We've had a couple. We have East Hampton. No, this is play, the plain this field. Plain field. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Good. So I mean, there's going to be actually a really good talk there: climate change, extreme weather, pest disease, and street street tree maintenance and role of volunteers by Rick Harper okay. um, on Thursday, February 28th. So I can no, I can make a copy of this and PDF it and send. It to I folks. think we all get Citizen Forester, don't we? Okay. Yeah. So right. we'll just look it up. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I think it would be. I'm going to go to at least one of them to show our support. I think it would be good to okay. try to go to a couple of them. I always like to listen to Rick speak. Yeah, he's good speaker. There's, there's multiple dates. Here. Which is best. To that one is in the middle, on the bottom. So other than that, really, it's just been regular routine tree work. Um, we did end up, we are going to end up taking down at least eight large silver maples on Woodlawn Avenue on the Child's Park side. How many? Eight. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, that was in the paper, wasn't it? Yeah, yes. Yeah. And probably a, probably a few more on the other side once I complete all the inspections. Um, Have they been identified in those? They are, yes. Uh -huh. Yes. So you, that, that might be a place where we can discuss further on down the line of planning of the plan mm -hmm. for a planting mm -hmm. to, uh, to do a mass planting possibly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that after last meeting, when you tipped us off to it, we, we added it to our priority street list. Right. And that's really about it. Unless somebody has anyone has questions, probably a lot more I can say, but that's fine. Good. I'll give us a little more time to speak with Greg. Okay. All right. So, um, thanks for coming, Greg. My pleasure. Um, you know, I'm always interested in um, inviting people who are, you know, on the ground um, professionals in our in the field who have um, a different perspective than we might on what's happening at ground level, um, and to share your your perspective, your wisdom, any advice. Um, concerns you see on kind of a, you know, in a larger systemic kind of way. You know, our mission is to protect public shade trees and to promote and plan for, you know, growing our public shade tree canopy. Um, but that doesn't mean we, you know, close our eyes to what's happening with private trees because it's all related to the same. Absolutely. Same thing. So um, I'm, I'm just going to leave this open-ended. I want to make sure that I give you know half the time for people to ask questions. Um, you know, I, I would just say, from my perspective, I'd love to hear about what what sort of what are your typical clients? What are the things they're asking for these days? What do you see any um, you know any overarching patterns um, concerns that you feel like we should know about? Yeah, oh, great. Um, so as far as far as um, boots on the ground, looking for new things. Um, uh, well, I stated earlier uh, before the meeting started. Uh, I, I worked in Connecticut before working here in North Connecticut. Uh, one thing that I've seen firsthand uh, sweep through Connecticut is emerald ash borer. Mm -hmm. It is, it's bad. Um, you know, to the Hartford, you, you, you hardly see it. they have more ash trees than we do. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully. Uh, up here, um, but we still have ash trees. Um, so, so, so that I don't know if it's been confirmed in Northampton. It, it has been. I actually have uh, five logs. We just took on an ash tree the other day um, that I was inspecting. I couldn't find any um, any, any galleries or exit holes. Um, so I have yet to see it here, but I have no reason to believe it's not here. Uh, it's been confirmed in Arcadia. 
in of the sanctuary? Yep. Okay. So yeah, I, I know it's confirmed uh, in the Berkshires. I know it's been confirmed in Vermont, and I know for saying it's bad in the eastern part of the state. So I have no reason to believe it's not here. Um, as you guys know, I mean, it, it's it, 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 it will kill any and all untreated ash trees. Um, doesn't matter if it's green ash, white ash. Um, thankfully, they only eat ash trees. Um, um, the, 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 there is treatment um, you know, that I've seen firsthand, and I've personally injected hundreds of trees, um, so, so I've seen them um, survive. Uh, it, it can be done. Um, um, our research lab, uh, when you're on the heels of it right now, the, we're really only recommending um, direct trunk injections as far as control. Um, once the population, you know, right now the population's uh, peaking, once the population starts, uh, of the actual boars themselves, um, starts to level out, uh, we might be able to shift our um, treatment plans. But I'm telling customers in Northampton, we need to inject this 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 year and every other year for at least four, mm -hmm. four, mm -hmm. four rotations. Let's give it eight years. Um, and then we might be able to change our, um, change our approach as far yeah. as control goes. Um, so, EAV is, is here, uh, it, it's serious. Um, the other thing that I've been, uh, for the last few months, uh, well, this acquisition happened in August, uh, so, so I, 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 well, I didn't move from Connecticut, <laughs> lived in Conway, but I moved up, my office shifted from Sinsbury, Connecticut to Northampton. Um, I've had a ton of calls, not so much out of Northampton, uh, Gypsy Moth. Um, gypsy moth is, I'm going to say it's its pretty extreme. Uh, I've been dealing it with in Connecticut, uh, but out in uh, the Amherst area, uh, Pelham, and uh, east, you know, as you get closer to Wabin, it's really, really, really bad. Uh, I mean, we're, we're seeing, you know, dead standing oak trees. Um, I, I'm not, I mean, it, it's something to definitely monitor for very closely. I've probably seen 12 egg masses in the city of Northampton, and I'm looking for them. Mm -hmm. um, it's very few, right? Yeah, it's yeah. very few, yeah. I mean, I, I you can't see an oak tree without, I got 100 of them if you look at it closely enough, out in Amherst right now. Wow. Um, yeah. Cool. If the wind's blowing west in the spring, they're going to be here. Mm -hmm. um, they're they're going to be ballooning, um, mm -hmm. ballooning this way. Um, they can travel anywhere from 4 to 20 miles on a tree gust of wind, so but you're, you're within that range so it's something to keep an eye out for mm -hmm. and drought conditions yeah so, so like, right? oh, do they thrive in yeah. drought? And, and that's the reason they're yeah. they're such an issue right now uh, 2015 2016 very dry record-breaking dry years mm -hmm. um, there's a naturally occurring fungus that generally keeps these guys at bay you know every year we have gypsy moth uh, but this we rely on this fungus to knock them back so we have two years of that fungus not being activated at the right time the populations grew um, Last year in Connecticut, honestly, Gypsy Moth wasn't that bad. That wasn't until I started getting calls up into Massachusetts going, here they are. <laughs> because I chased them in 2015, 2016 in Connecticut. Or excuse me, 16, 17 in Connecticut. Um, it, it, it's so bad right now out in uh, Amherst, with, you know, right, right up the road, that uh, I'm working with um, you know, colleges and universities to put together programs uh, and we're basically going because they're oak trees and apple trees and birch trees, all those highly subtle trees were stripped last year. Some of them were stripped the year before. It's that consecutive years of defoliation that exhausts the energy of the tree. Um, so I'm, we're hitting it full force, um, either injections or a foliar spray, um, depending on the tree, the location, um, and the client's expectations. Um, if, if foliar sprays are an option, I'm recommending two treatments. Uh, we, we, we are using very safe products to sell and conserve. Um, Celeprin is formulated to, it just controls caterpillars, it has to be adjusted in order for it to um, activate, in order for it to work, it's safe for bumblebees. Um, and we're also recommending deep root fertilizing on all future trees, especially if they were stripped of their oak, oak stripped of their leaves last year, as well as a soil applied um, material to control two-line chestnut bore. 
uh, which is on the heels of gypsy moth. You know, gypsy moth weaken the tree, two, two lined chestnut borer generally will be we'll the nail on the coffin. Can you say that again? Two lined chestnut borer. Um, I don't know if it's a native pest, um, but its its populations right now are spiking in the Coabin area. And uh, they, 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 they generally eat oaks and beech trees. That uh, they thrive on stressed oak and beech. And right now, that's all Amherst has is stressed oak and beech trees. Uh, so we're anticipating that population to, to, to spike. Um, that can be controlled with a soil applied material. Um, gives good control for two line chestnut form. Um, so I'm, I'm telling some customers I might need to need, meet their oak trees between three and six times, depending on you know, how bad it was eaten last year or the year before. In a single season? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it depends on the value of that tree and, yeah. and how bad, you know, um, does it have a good root flare, you know, how, how healthy that tree is. You know, the, the stress trees are going to be the first ones to go. Yeah. Um, I do know this, there, there's companies in Connecticut that are just, especially Eastern Connecticut, uh, where 2015, 2016, and 2017 were really bad for Gypsy Mott. The, the tree care companies are overwhelmed with removals right now. So, yeah. it, it's mainly oaks, mainly oaks. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm not sounding the alarm bell here. Yeah. Um, I, like I said, I've seen maybe 12 egg masses all through Northampton. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll see 12 Does on one. Does getting across the river pose a challenge for them, or is that uh, not they, a very form of business? Um, when the caterpillar moves, you know, they, they produce silk. Um, yeah. they, they climb up high in the tree or high off any structure. And when they're the first instar, when they're about this big, and they're just full of hairs, and they just get picked up in the wind and they could go north, south, east, west. Mm -hmm. yeah, they have no control that way. Yeah. But um, they can travel, um, I, I think, up to 30 miles. I think it's easy for them to travel four to five miles. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in extreme, you know, you get a really windy day at the right, yeah. right time of year, uh, they can move. Wow. Um, Is there any recommendation for the clients to uh, irrigate water? Yes, absolutely. Water? Uh, it's mm -hmm. all about alleviating as much stress as possible for these trees. Um, you know, the early season defoliators like the, cat the gypsy moth are extremely um, energy taxing to the tree. It takes all that energy to make the leaves only to be stripped. Mm -hmm. and if the tree is lucky, it might push out a second less productive. You know, the leaves, people in Amherst were, uh, they hardly had leaf removal this year. Um, and it, it, it's, it's pretty crazy. Wow. Well, it sounds inevitable that we get So, I was working with uh, Joe, um, well, not working with, but um, I, I met with Joe, um, uh, I always pronounce his last name. Oh, right? Elkington. Elkington, thank you. <clears throat> and I um, did a presentation with him to a homeowner association. Uh, he's doing actually some studies with Arborjet, uh, which is a chemical manufacturer and they produce a lot of um, uh, equipment that they they're really on injecting trees. Uh, that, that's their that's their niche. That's what they do. That's the equipment they produce and the, and the chemicals they produce. And so they're doing studies all throughout uh, Amherst, and I'm doing studies. I'm walking out of these job sites and uh, residences, and there's 15 oaks, and two of them are tagged. What is this? I'm like, well, this tree was injected. Why weren't all these? They're, they're part of these studies. So I'm I'm trying very hard not to undo his research because um, he's he's got a lot of a lot invested in this. So, and what is his title, or what is his association? He uh, he's been studying. Um, he's a PhD at UMass. Uh, he's been studying population dynamics of invasive species. Um, he was going to retire last year, uh, but with this gypsy mouth, he's been studying gypsy mouth for thirty three years. He says, <laughs> and uh, he said um, it's because they're right in my backyard. I can't retire, so this, yeah. this is delaying his retirement. Um, that's why he called me out. I didn't, I didn't know who he was, you know, being relatively new to the area. I just had an appointment at noon at this guy Joe's house, and he's he kind of put me, he didn't introduce himself. He was like, hey, I got a gypsy mouth problem. What do you recommend? I was like, so I gave him my spiel. He's like, all right. And then he started sharing me, you know, his research and all his publications. And, uh, <laughs> uh, nice guy. Nice guy. How does this outbreak compare to previous years? So they're saying uh, 1981. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, if you were here, you remember it. Mm -hmm. um, what was really bad? They're saying it's 
could be. So one thing that Joe is also looking into is we had a wet spring last year. Mm -hmm. So they were, they were anticipating this fungus to knock them back. Like mm -hmm. People were actually like, oh, there's no way they're gonna survive this. But then in July, we're getting reports of moths everywhere. And if you look at the trees now, there's egg masses everywhere. The, the fungus, it activated in some areas, but not other areas. Mm -hmm. so the way this fungus, you have to have moisture at the right time. This fungus is on the caterpillars. But it has to be it has to germinate at, at the right time mm -hmm. to control the caterpillar. Um, and you just, there's studies going on why that fungus because yeah. we had last year was a wet year. Yeah. Uh, but we just didn't have rain at the right time. Um, in Connecticut, you can tell the gypsy moss succumb to the fungus because they have a V-shaped. Yeah, you know, they're hanging off the tree half half dead. Um, I saw that all over Connecticut, but uh, apparently that didn't happen here. Um, so there's some studies going on there. Something to be mindful of to to be on the lookout for for sure. And if, if I see things, uh, I'll, you know, I'll I'll help raise the raise. Yeah, raise you two them. are connected. Yeah, I, I, uh, by by phone. But by we phone, yeah. Connected, email, and everything else. Put time he leaves today. Absolutely, yeah. So. absolutely, yeah, right. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. My, my first tree removal that was even largely questionable. I'm like, I gotta get rich. <laughs> and this one. She did. <laughs> and then he called to remind me because I am a little slow sometimes. <laughs> so, what a clarification. Thank you. Other questions? Have you been getting uh, requests for removals for solar? Yeah. Actually, that's how we came. No, not a removal. Not a removal. <laughs> very, very Delicate uh, conservative, trim. conservative trim because we're putting solar on. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's how I meant. Though. But, uh, but otherwise, uh, aside from me, I'm not a typical customer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I do. I would say over the course of the last five, six years, uh, you know, in Connecticut, and I've gotten a few in Massachusetts. Um, yeah, definitely gotten requests for true removal for solar. Mm -hmm. uh, Give an idea of like percentage increase or percentage of your business for takedowns uh, because of solar. Oh, a, a percentage yeah. of the actual takedowns oh, for soil uh, for solar. Yeah. Oh, m pretty minimal. Okay. Very, yeah, very minimal. Um, yeah. What What is the most common reason for safety? Mm -hmm. Safety or Proceed safety or yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I talk. I try to talk to people on removing trees all the time. Thank um, you. <laughs> I, um, uh, believe me, that I, um, <coughs> but there's a time and yeah. time and place to remove a tree, yeah. Um, and yeah, it, it could be um, mostly safety. Uh, additions are a big one. You know, changing footprints of buildings, and you know, like, you got to remove this tree. Um, and you're aware of the significant tree ordinance in this town? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Because mm -hmm. that, that's that would be triggered. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I, I do service in the Northampton area, but I also service uh, a lot of other uh, towns. Uh, so, so yeah, absolutely. This may be common knowledge, but when you do remove a tree, do you get infestation of whether it's thermal dash or just loss? What what do you do with the tree? Um, good question. Um, generally, the, the, the wood gets uh, chipped and, and used as mulch. Um, Wagner Wood at Amherst will come and, and, and take, our, take our wood. Um, if, if there's a, a need that I can fill, if somebody contacts me and wants wood, uh, we're happy to provide it. Uh, we, 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 you know, we keep wood for firewood for our guys and, and here and there. And a lot of times customers will ask us to leave it, and we will. Uh, but yeah, most most of the times, um, you know, I've been doing a lot of pine removals lately, and nobody really wants yeah. pine. Uh, but you know, hey, if if somebody wants the wood, we're you know, we're more well than able to to get rid of it. Do you know, um, it's been infested. Oh, if it's been infested, um, that's a good question. So gypsy moths. Um, We'll put it this way, I haven't removed anything in Northampton that I've known has emerald ash borer. A gypsy moth, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, those those tr trees are getting chipped and moved. Uh, I will say this, the good news is the uh, one of our big sites to get rid of wood responsibly is in Amherst, so it's we're, we're not bringing gypsy moth over the, over the river here to Northampton. Um, it would make no sense to bring it from there to get it back to there. Um, so yeah, good question. Well, um, 
I regret that we have to move on in our agenda, but it was wonderful having you come. I hope you would consider coming again because you're a wealth of knowledge. I learned a lot just in the 10 minutes you were here. Absolutely. No, thank so you for um, thank you. You're welcome to s stick around and, um, you know, possibly enjoy the next portion of our presentation. <laughs> Um, I mean, I, I, would probably, also, well, I would probably get something out of this, you know, being the new Yeah, yeah, new yeah sure. Town, You're so welcome I, to stay. I, I you don't mind. have to move from the table. Just stay where you are. What am I saying? Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank Excellent. You. All right. So we um, have Carol Mitt, our senior land planner for the city of Northampton, going to help talk us through um, the zoning ordinance and specifically the one that is under, that is related to the so I, this is so the significant tree ordinance amendments already went through and were adopted. This is sort of a um, it's related but um, slightly different. Um, we currently allow um, large scale ground mounted solar installations in Northampton in specific locations throughout the city. But there's been a um, hard and fast cap on the amount of wood that can be removed on parcels for the purposes of creating these um, solar systems, solar fields, basically. Um, and that was to sort of go for a couple of reasons: one, to go slowly, we, and also to under, to know that you know we weren't going to be clear cutting huge swaths of the city just for the purposes of gaining another <laughs> um, um, good or, or um, to try to move in um, to create more opportunities for renewable energy production. Um, but over the time, I guess that was probably adopted in 2011, um, the, um, we, sort of, we did a whole scale um, solar ordinance that addressed not only rooftop but over parking lots as well as these large ground mounted systems. Um, they're required, for the most part, if you're doing um, a big sort of utility scale system, that requires a special permit from the planning board. And since this was adopted, there have been um, people who've been very interested in um, pursuing um, production of five, you know, five mostly right around, I guess it probably relates to the um, solar um, credits that are at the state level, but um, systems that probably would cover, I don't know, 10 to 40 acres, depending on the size of the system. Um, so people can have bumped up against this cap because we don't allow large ground mounted systems everywhere in the city. And We've had people come and want to install down in the floodplain, for example, and um, along the Connecticut River floodplain because it's wide open and they just see a big field and think, okay, this will be easy. We'll install the units and walk away. But the reason why we're protecting the um, floodplain is because it's our prime agricultural soils area. So, and it's the floodplain, so we don't <laughs> we don't want to introduce, um, you know. Um, a system of that size in the floodplain necessarily um, and displace flood capacity elsewhere, but also we want to make sure we're keeping our agricultural soils available for farming. So what that means is that other parts of the city are where these installations can happen, but we have a lot of wooded areas in other parts of the city. Um, so we've had several um, uh, prospective applicants come forward who've been stymied by this cap of 25,000 board feet. So what's in front of you now is a proposal to allow for more um, forests to be cut for the purposes of creating solar insulation, but under very precise conditions. Um, and the planning board would still have the capacity to say no, um, depending on the circumstances, it would all be site specific, but they're also very um, rigorous, I think rigorous um, conditions under which uh, a prospective um, developer um, could get a permit. And so that's what's in front of you. So these, ten, I mean, that's the big 
the bulk of the change that's being proposed is to allow a special permit for people who are doing more than 25,000 board feet of um, removal. And, um, but the idea is we still want to protect ecologically um, um, sensitive areas and steep slopes and wetland areas, riverfront areas. Um, and what's also proposed is that uh, 50% of the property would have to be permanently protected as open space um, or put in some kind of conservation restriction so that it's not just about going in and clear cutting and getting um, solar and then the property owner you know walks away with um, a great benefit for themselves and the energy production for the community but there's also there's additional goods being protected in the form of open space um, that sort of mirrors what our cluster subdivision regulations um, require. So when you do a cluster development, you have to permanently protect at least 50% of the property. So it's not without some, I mean, there are, there are other examples in the zoning ordinance that um, are mirrored here. Um, and I see that there were questions about how this relates to the significant tree ordinance. Um, currently, even under even if tree removal is required for solar installation um, today without this change the significant tree ordinance ordinance um, is still applicable so if someone came in and said i want to you know remove three acres of forest and it doesn't bump up against that cap they'd still have to go out and inventory those trees and any of the trees over 20 inches um, would be um, required to be replaced under the significant tree ordinance. That would still be in effect um, moving forward with this change. Um, the change just merely would allow in very specific conditions more than three to four acres of forested area to be removed. So it's a lot of tree replacement. And as an example, I don't know if you knew this, but um, the planning board just approved a special permit for Con Edison off of, uh, at the old uh, Willard Pit, off of Burt's Pit Road. Mm -hmm. And a lot of trees were taken down prior to the application mm -hmm. to the planning board. Mm -hmm. um, they are, because of the way the tree, significant tree ordinance is written, there's a 12 month look back period. So, the solar installer is still um, bound by the significant tree ordinance and the replacement requirements for those because 147 trees that came down or something like that, it may have to be off by a couple of digits but they have um, a lot of tree replacement to do based on that even though um, it was not part of the special permit criteria. So they're, they operate independently of each other, um, the significant tree ordinance and the solar um, uh, special permit criteria. Okay, so many questions, but I want to make sure other people ask questions too. May I? Um, and forgive me if this has already gone back and forth between some people. I don't know if I ever um, heard it. Why is it expressed in board feet? Um, <clears throat> because it's, so it started out um, because that's the way that um, commercial timber is um, accounted mm -hmm. for, and Rich, you might be able to um, fill in a little bit more detail, but a rid so there is a, there's a number at the state level under, I mean, it's a threshold under which you either, you have to get some kind of permit from the state level, it's 25,000 board feet, which is where we came up with that number mm -hmm. to begin with. Yeah. But board feet is a, is a way to measure value of timber on the market. Yeah, I understand what board feet is, I was just wondering why the, this document uses that measurement. Whereas we came up with scenarios where you might not have any board feet, but there's significant woody plant material that serves an ecological value. Serving an ecological value. Um, I guess I would say that it's um, an easier, it's a, you know, we need some measuring stick. 
And most of these areas that we're talking about where there's going to be clearing are large stands uh, or contain large stands of trees as opposed to woody undergrowth. So, um, I, I, I mean, I think that's frankly just what we've seen out there. Really Where are those? Places. So, um, a lot of different places. So, a couple of examples of people who have asked for a solar installation up at the um, Leeds Nursing Home. So, up on the hill, up of River Road, hmm. there's an open, there's a cleared area where the nursing home is. But there are acres and acres of land beyond that that are completely forested. Um, so um, they've had a solar installer go and look. They hired a forester to go out and take measurements and figure out how much um, had, would need to come down to make a viable operation. Um, that's one place off of Ryan Road, sort of by the revolver, I don't know what you should call it, the, sh the shooting range across from Ryan Road School. That's all for, you know, the Sawmill Hills is there, but there's a lot of privately held acreage outside of the Sawmill Hills. Um, um, even the Burt's Pit Road area, the, the gravel pit, still had a lot of acreage that was treed and that came down um, with the intention of having a solar, solar installation um, there. So it's really, I mean, if you just, um, in my office I have a big aerial of the city and I could just, you know, circle all the areas that are treated. It's a lot of the city. Thank you. Yeah. And I just have a, just for a point of clarification about four feet of timber, I'm just, I know it's a, it's a, like a common industrial measurement, but is it four, I guess my confusion is, is it, is board feet of timber uh, only trees that would be useful for timber harvest versus stuff that's too little or do you know what yeah. I'm trying to say? Um, it's, that's my understanding. And species that are are, are have commercial yeah, yeah have commercial, commercial value. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. that's another area in which we expressed concern at our last meeting was that is not valuing the ecological benefits that other trees that don't have commercial value are providing, so it's not really putting them in the equation. So our concern was that um, that the, de the word timber be defined very precisely and broadly so that, um, so that trees that have value beyond commercial value be counted somehow in the equation because you could have those lots that don't have a lot of commercial value trees but have ecological value and and you know I, you know, I think you you might see where I'm going in that we, we just want to we want to make sure that the true value of trees is counted and it's and you're not boxed into this very narrow interpretation of what is valuable in a tree yeah I mean I think I I understand that. I think it. Um, I'm just wondering, and I, you know, I look to Rich to be able to tell me this. Um, would it be the case that if you were going through a forested area, you, there are probably trees within there that are not as valuable as other trees? So maybe they're not going to be counted, or maybe their board fees could. There's going to be a smaller amount that can be taken out, but. Um, I, is it true to assume that those would be interspersed with other high value trees? Um, well, it, it all depends. What's it all depends what the the overstory. So the over, the overstory really would be all the mm -hmm. the um, would be the board feet of timber that yeah. would be valuable. Right. The understory would be if there are trees of the same species, they can be used for other things: pulp wood, paper. Things yeah. that they're not gonna they're not gonna make four feet out of high dollar four feet. Yeah, I mean, I guess the other way to do it is if that if that were, um, you know, we've gotten rough estimates of what that means on different parcels. So in terms of acreage, so in some cases it may be three to four acres, in other cases it might be four to five acres. I haven't really heard anything more than five acres, um, and that may be really oversimplifying it, but. I mean, we could use an acreage number. So if we're saying a special permit is required for anything more than four 
four acres of clearing that sort of captures everything in there. The ordinance still would require, the significant tree ordinance doesn't go away with this. So again, even if the, you're getting, you know, um, 25,000 board feet um, of timber, you're reaching that threshold, you still have to do replacement for those trees that are over 20 inches, even if someone's decided that that tree in particular is only worth pulp or for paper or whatever. So there's that piece too, but I don't, there's no, I don't think from our office's perspective, we're not wedded to keeping it to board feet. We were trying to initially, going back to 2011, come up with some number to cap the clearing. So if acreage makes more sense, I don't think, you know, from a staff level, we wouldn't really have a problem with it. It was an easier number to use when there's a state threshold about when you have to go get permits. Um, or you know get a forest cutting plan or whatever. So that's why we sort of followed that. Um, and Carolyn, just for clarification, this this is likely or already decisively going to be put through. We're we're just having the opportunity to amend it. So we think it's very important to put something through quickly, and the reason is um, currently. We have a hard cap on the 25,000 board feet. So we allow solar installations up to 25,000 board feet with a special permit. However, we've been, uh, the project at the Burt's Pit Road, um, gravel pit, um, they found a, what I would call a loophole around um, having to comply with this cap by having, you know, the solar and solar didn't have anything to do with cutting the trees. They figured they found a legal way to do it without it. So we want to, in this way, it tightens it up. We know there are other applicants who have knocked on the door and we've said, no, you can't do it. So if they see that there's been another applicant that has been able to do it, we want to make sure this goes through in January. We want to introduce something to council in January. The idea about coming to you now is yes, to get your input and buy-in and to co-sponsor with the mayor mm -hmm. so that we can introduce it to city council and it can make its way through before somebody else decides mm -hmm. to um, use that same opportunity. So uh, I have a couple of questions that are a little bit more zoomed out. Um, one is, do you feel like the city explored the science of the you know uh, of the cost versus benefit of removing a, a stand of trees of significant size for the purpose of producing renewable energy and that the cost benefit analysis landed on the side of benefit overall benefit like has there been research that that you look to to say this is worth the trade um we did not do a formal cost-benefit analysis, no. Um, I think that um, what um, we've had um, people argue is um, that, and one actually I should step back and say we've had people argue at different, um, not just on the tree removal, but wanting to go into the um, floodplain, for example, to, to install solar there. Um, we feel like the city of Northampton is not going to get to 100% um, solar um, for renewable energy ever, or at least certainly not for a very long time. So we don't want to open up and eliminate you know, our agricultural resources for that purpose. Um, we So I guess I would say we've sort of looked um, taken a step back to say, okay, if we want to get to, um, <coughs> you know, carbon neutral by 2050, which is what the mayor is saying, um, we need to take steps to allow more opportunities for renewable energy. But we don't want to trade everything. Obviously, we don't want to clear cut the entire city, right? So by allowing a special permit for some limited number of these um, on a case-by-case -case basis, we felt like that would get us more towards being able to develop renewable energy, but also having a handle on protection. So that's why we're also saying, 
you know, we're not saying give a permit, go clear your 30 acres and be done with it, but make sure you're not impacting a uh, wetland buffer or wetland resource directly. Make sure you're permanently protecting open space. So we're trying to weigh, and then also give it to the planning board to weigh all of those in the moment for a specific site. So it could be the planning board could look at it and say, your forester, your arborist has said that this, these, the stand of trees are, um, Historically significant, or they've been there's some something that's incredible about this area. We don't think a special permit's appropriate at all. So sorry, you're not getting your permit. One one um, recommendation would be, uh, you know, it's it's back of the envelope, but the there are ways to calculate the carbon that's, that's held in, in a mm -hmm. particular stand of trees given given their mass and whatever mm -hmm. and to weigh that into the equation when when the planning board is evaluating whether or not it's a particular project is worthy of clear cutting for for solar expansion to look at the carbon that is going to essentially get released back in the atmosphere with the trees being removed versus the carbon that you're saving by not burning fossil fuels and and i you know it, unless we do that, this is this is a guessing game. It'll always be a guessing game, and we could be guessing on the wrong side. And um, and so, I, I, you know, I strongly recommend that they be given the tools to do that calculation. Yeah. Well, I think the way the ordinance is written is that we're saying the applicant has to prove that they're meeting that. So the condition number six um, specifically says. If over 25,000 board feet of timber must be removed, the project must be carbon neutral over the first 10 years of operation, and the applicant shall provide the following calculations. So looking at the total volume of timber, the converting of that, um, and subtracting carbon offsets. So the idea is that the board isn't charged with going out and doing all these calculations, but the applicant has to prove themselves and show how they got there. But is that six C and D, right? That's um, A through E. Okay. Yeah. So is that part of the methodology that they look at the carbon that's being re-released into the atmosphere when those trees are removed? Like that, that's the part that I really want to push is that that is part of the equation. It's not just number C. Number so C. It's, it's, C. It's, Converting the net timber to be removed to short tons of carbon. Okay. Okay. And then E, if there's any net release of carbon with the above calculations, the application the applicant shall assign renewable energy credits to the city to match or exceed this release. So, of carbon. so that part again is not just the timber, because there's more than you know. We know that in a given there's likely more than just timber. Mm -hmm. So the, the, that carbon calculation should include like every bit of woody material. Like, is there a way you can get that in there? Well, is it every bit of woody material, including the rhododendron and mountain laurel, or is it? Why not? Um, Why not? It's part of the equation. I mean, to me, that's. I mean, the devil's always in the details. So, I mean, to the extent that they can. Excuse me. I'm talking about converting in terms of like if it's used for lumber versus if it's just. Just. It's just burned up. Yeah, I mean, all of that stuff is, is going to be converting? carbon released into the atmosphere, yeah. right? I mean, it, whether it's a rhododendron or a, a mm -hmm. you know sumac tree, like you know an early um, succession plant, um, they all hold carbon, and that's all going to be released back in the atmosphere. So it just seems to me that it's incumbent upon the person to prove that all when you consider all of that, there's still a net benefit. I mean, that would be mine. We're related yeah. to that, I, I'm not sure whether I read it really from the city of Northampton or somewhere else, but there are projects where they're requiring to leave the stumps. Mm -hmm. Did you come across that? Yeah, there are. So we actually asked Con Edison about whether they would be able to do that. Um, and we talked about potentially adding that to this language. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that could be something, and, and that may be as an um, alternative to doing the calculation for all woody material, but to leave the stumps in place. Right. Con Edison actually um, said that they couldn't do that for the number of trees because of um, the number of stumps that were there and um, that they, I, 
I don't know if it was they had already designed it and they hadn't designed around the stumps, but they had. They said that that wasn't. Um, them. I, I was very curious when I read the article about places requiring I mean, some as to how they engineered it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. Right. I, I just didn't say right. the article that I read. So I mean, maybe that's an maybe that's an alternative to you know if you added all woody material or left you know well, some right. in place. <laughs> well, I see a I see a problem in saying all woody material because it's very hard to um, come up with the volume. There's a methodology for coming up with more feet that's, yeah. that's right. industry right. accepted. Um, uh, the carbon value. Would oh. a light auto pick up? You know? No. Not Would it go not. underneath? Yeah. So I, I just have a, a theory. I just want to make sure I'm getting my head around this whole thing. Um, let's say, for example, there was a, a piece of property that um, had been logged you know, back in the day, and it's like, you know, a bunch of poplars and birches and, you know, just newer stuff, nothing bigger than 20 inches, you know. Maybe due to the species, there's no, there's no uh, board feet of timber harvested, right? Mm -hmm. But let's say you put in a four or five acre, um, solar array, would that trigger, like how would you folks decide, you know, the people come and say, okay, we want to clear cut all this, you know, brushy trees and, you know, that still has value as far as, it doesn't have value in board feet. This is where, uh, like I, I, I never was in the timber industry, so I have a little hard time. Board feet thing. So I guess what, what, how would that sit with the planning board? Do, do, I don't know. I well, I mean, the way clear? it's written, I guess it would say, I mean, so, so what we've done now is say, okay, you have to hire a forester and tell us how many right. board feet you're removing. Right. Forester comes back and says, oh, well, to do this project, we should do 30,000 board feet. So we've been relying on the foresters to tell mm -hmm. us, and mm -hmm. then we say, okay, we can't even come to the planning board. Mm -hmm. If that were the case where they would go out and they say, well, yeah, there's a stand of trees, but there's no board feet. But value, we'd say zero or one or whatever. Right, right, right. Then we would say, okay, you don't, you're, you wouldn't trigger this section of the code. Mm -hmm. You would just get need a special permit. But it's because you're not over twenty five thousand board feet. Then, and it were under twenty inch, they were all under twenty inches. There would be no tree replacement. So, so I guess my question is. Um, so it doesn't trigger these microscopic looks then, and would it still po possibly trigger? Oh, it's if there's vernal pools in there, or there's yes. So, okay, so even so, even if this doesn't um, come into play, if this isn't triggered, there's still a requirement for setbacks mm -hmm. from vernal pools under our local ordinance and um, but that would be a conservation commission approval it's not oh, part okay. of the planning for right, right, right. jurisdiction okay. and this is sort of a hard stop on you know the buffer zone mm -hmm. and the and vernal pools whereas if someone were coming forward and it had been previously cleared area there may be more flexibility from the conservation commission's perspective mm -hmm. maybe not but um, mm -hmm. But they would weigh in. But on they that. then that would be a separate permitting Got process it. that would go in parallel. Okay. So that could potentially. So potentially, I'm just saying theoretically, the value of those trees for producing oxygen, for sequestering carbon, for mitigating stormwater, that would not be considered. Right. And I will also say that this, uh, no matter anything over an acre, also requires a stormwater permit. So there's still an evaluation of okay. stormwater okay. when um, more than an acre of land is disturbed. Okay. Can you um, just speak to the downside of just saying four or five acres instead of 25,000 more feet? Um, is there something?
I guess I can't. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't. I don't know that there's really a downside. Um, ex, you know, I think again, it's sort of just using a number that's an industry standard. Um, um, if, if, so, if it were like five acres, then uh, large projects would would come under this rule. If right. we had so if we said a five acre, um, yeah. And then, and then if it were an incredibly de beautiful smaller project, I mean, uh, if there were incredibly beautiful trees in a smaller area than five acres, then you run into the 20 inch rule, obviously. Right, so, and it's still a special permit, but it wouldn't be this portion right. of the special mm -hmm. permit. Right? So you get the 20 inch, you know, like some incredible tree. So okay. if it's kind of scrappy trees, the five acres would cover it. If it were three acres on the beach. So even if it were five acres or more, you know, some at some point, five, six, seven, I have no idea. Yeah. In some scale. Yeah. It seems simpler than than saying more feet. Right. Because also it's well, less it work. also is less work for the applicant to yeah. go out with a forester and so to say where at what point am I getting to this? Although you still have to have a calculation done for yeah. the carbon yeah. offset. Well, also, right. but would that remove the forester's eyes on that project though? Like if you said five no, really. acres, because now you're getting in. The, like if it, if it stays in board feet. I'm just wondering if that would well, change. Well, we still need an evaluation of any of those trees, whether they're 20 inches or yeah. more. Mm -hmm. So we always okay. require the forester right. would okay. go in and say, of okay. the area you're clearing, how many of those are 20 inches okay. or greater? Okay. Yeah. So I, I, I like the, the idea of acreage. Um, I think it would be easier for everybody and would make sure that uh, Certainly always, add easier for the property owner as yeah. well to be able to conceptualize, okay, right. if I want to put it here, is that five acres, okay, I'm going to hit this. And they'll know right away as opposed to having to wait for the forester to come in. And that had a problem I have is I don't quite understand how to incentivize people to simply cut down the trees in some prior years and then go out on the market to, if you don't, if you just have board feet, why, if I own 10 acres, then I can sort of remove all the good lumber one year and then a couple of years later sell it to a solar company? Right. Well, that that is one of the issues here. I mean, that's why you also added in the sort of the look at that period to mm -hmm. mirror the significant tree ordinance. Mm -hmm. But it's still only 12 months. Yeah, nothing. So it is true. The thing that probably would work against that is, or would, um, be a disincentive is that right now the way it's so expensive to do these you really need state credit you really need mm -hmm. the um, credits at the state level so if you're going to do this you want to get in line get yourself you're going to be going quickly to uh -huh. so that you can qualify for those credits um well other than that the credible credit thing is flexible and changing yeah whereas if you just say five acres then no one can strip their land of trees in order to avoid Right. This whole process, which I, I see as so. I don't know. I, I think if there's a problem with it being acreage, yeah, then you know, then I then again, it, but, I don't, I don't see it um, right now. I, again, the number was pulled out when we were first doing sure. this in eleven, and um, based on that sort of the the threshold for. Um, DCR and getting a forest kind of plant from it. So, can we ask? I mean, I we, have, we, we, have, we have to make comment, right, as a group? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, if you want to vote yeah. and say, you know, we want to do acres, we want to do five acres, I can put that in there. So, basically, the way this is, is, you know, we definitely want you guys to sign on to it, and then we take it back to the mayor and make sure he's fine with it. But I don't, I don't see really an issue. Yeah, and I mean, and so where C stands, instead of saying converting the net timber, I suppose you'd say something like converting the net trees. Maybe we don't have to quibble about the, the fine underbrush, but if there are trees at all that are being removed, that those should be factored in the equation. Mm -hmm. The carbon equation. Of the carbon equation. Yeah. 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 Um, I want to. I don't know. I guess we didn't get the. You know, I'm not sure how to address this um, stuff. 
uh, maintaining the stumps in C2. Um, Did you see some art there's some projects and some articles there? Yeah. I, I don't really follow it that closely. Um, it was discussed here. I mean, at the very least, they, you could ask it on the application, and it could be fav you know it could be favorably looked upon if they have a plan to to maintain the stumps. Well, it would be a way of them meeting the ten year carbon mm -hmm. neutral. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, so I mean, it's good. already in there. And yeah. That could, a people in the business kind of know about the mm -hmm. stump thing. I, I don't really understand how they do it. So if we do the first um, five acres on that number seven as well. Um, Stumps for removed trees must remain in place and no excavation or soil disturbance is allowed other than what would be required to bore support posts. Um, so, I mean, the other piece of it is this could go through, there'll be a lot of debate. So once it's introduced to city council, it's going to go out for public hearing and there'll be debate on, you know, in front of city council, in front of the planning board. Um, so people may come out and say, you know, number seven is in these, well, completely in these, mm -hmm. well, you can't do that to us, or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the other piece is maybe no one says anything, it gets adopted, and then when it starts working its way through, people, you know, yeah. we may find that that's too onerous. Mm -hmm. And you can always, you can also always pull back. So if it's too onerous, we can come back and amend that out. But short of having the data, knowing that other places are also having that um, requirement is, um, it's probably safe to assume that there's no point, that there's a point in trying, you know, mm -hmm. for that as opposed to. Um, so I'm aware that we're 15 minutes off our, our um, agenda, agenda schedule here. I would like to propose that since Todd isn't here, that we eliminate the planning schedule. Sure. Okay. Um, like that allows us to catch up a little bit. And that maybe the tree Northampton update, can that be done in five minutes? Can we conclude okay. this? Yes, yeah, no, I'm trying to make room for it. That's, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Um, so, okay, so um, what is the turnaround time? Because I think we've got to get into wrap-up mode here. Yep. And um, I am conscious that our, our one sort of planning authority on the commission, Todd Ford, is not here. And I personally would love for him to, you know, give blessing to some of these mm -hmm. suggestions we're making. Um, which you know we can we can now authorize Todd to do um, during our you know open meeting. So um, what you know how fast do we need to move this along? So the next city council meeting is um, so introduction for the next city council meeting. The next meeting is tomorrow, so it's not going to go on the agenda. It could potentially go on the be introduced for the seventeenth, which means then it goes out for um, public hearing later like early february um so within a week like if we have but i could turn that i mean if you want to change the five acres and change timber to trees um i mean that's not a problem that'll take me i can turn it around tomorrow yeah okay. um but well, I, what, what i'm saying though is i would love for us to just bounce that by todd i think it's going to be fine mm -hmm. um but you know since he is a little bit more of our, our right. planning arm um that we do that and then get back to you so we can do our usual we can approve this subject yeah. to todd yeah. sending it back to you yeah. that's how we do it and then okay. come to you quickly i mean that's that's fine i would just be concerned if there were substantive changes that is happening outside of the public meeting so um i probably if he wanted well, substantive changes we don't have a meeting about it we just hand it to todd <laughs> yeah but you, right. yeah yeah but the, i get we yeah it's we has, it. um yeah it has to be put public. parameters on what we're giving to todd or yeah so, so, uh, carol let me just ask you if we actually take if we table this to the 16th Will, will it be able to get on the agenda, or is it? Because it has to be posted. The yeah, it has to be posted 48 hours yeah. before the meeting. Yeah. So, so the way to get it on the only way to get it technically on the meeting for City Council of the 17th is for the commission to vote in some form on some on some of these changes this evening mm -hmm. in order to move this along. In my opinion. Um, and then, so you're saying that we cannot? I, I, I mean, I would like, to, I would like to vote that 
that we uh, approve these suggested changes um, pending any complete red light that Todd gives. And if take it, Todd gives a, gives a, a, a red light, this, we don't even have to discuss it, then we, we do not vote, we are not supporting, we're not co-sponsoring this ordinance change. It's, it's an unlikely thing, but that's why we have safety valves. And that's, you know, that's the way I, I would prefer to do it, personally speaking. I mean, alternatively, you could vote on these changes, and um, as it goes through the process, if he feels that it's um, that something really needs to be changed, he could also inter he could also recommend that as a modification in the public hearing process. You know, after you, as a committee, discuss what his concerns are, and you feel like there'll be opportunities to do that. There, there's just oh, yeah. there are more opportunities. Yeah, so what happens is it gets introduced in council. It's not even going to be discussed on the 17th. It gets referred immediately to public hearing. Okay. The public hearing, I mean, I could let, um, okay. I could, um, I could let Rich know when the public hearing schedule is, but my best guess would be a, I could possibly put it for planning board on the 24th, but I'd probably do for public hearing the first one and then council subcommittee would be February 11th or something like that. So those are two opportunities and the 24th is after your next meeting anyway, so okay. you guys could talk about that if there are any changes you want to have inserted. Um, you know, um, and then it goes to council on the 11th. So I don't, it, it, um, I guess I would just recommend that um, you make a decision about whether you want to sponsor it with the edits that you guys have talked about. Um, and then I can forward it to Todd. Yeah. Um, and then you can see how it plays out. I think. Um, I think it probably wouldn't be the best protocol to allow him to make the decision about what gets changed with outside of the public meeting. How are folks feeling about that? So we would approve, so we, and then you would be in communication with him. Yeah, and yeah. you all say yeah. you're the evidence that you guys voted on, okay. and we can discuss and it in the team. Yeah. And so if, if, if he has um, you know, concerns that rise to the need to voice that, then he, there sounds like there are other opportunities. Yeah. Okay. So we need a motion. I make a motion to accept this as amended. So specifically, five acres instead of four feet and trees instead of two feet. Yeah, or in addition. And the stumps are going to be left in. Right? That's number seven, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that what we understood? In addition, or? I think trees say it all. I think trees capture timber and any anything else that would be a tree. Sure. Is there? Oh, back up just a bit. Yeah. Marilyn was suggesting instead of board feet to use five acres, mm -hmm. we have 25,000 board feet and an additional layer, the acreage. Uh, I think we're, we're, we're Are we substituting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And use the word trees instead of timber. Wherever the word timber is, you know, relevant, mm -hmm. replace it with trees. Uh, of course, it's, with 25,000 board feet of timber, you just take an apple thing out. Yeah, but the thought is if it was just a couple of acres, but it had 25,000 board feet. Okay, can you give well, us? I, a, I, I don't think you'd get to that. No. And I think that it partly addressed if you did have if you did have that like so twenty five thousand board, you know, if you had a lot of board feet on a very small acreage, they would be huge, gigantic trees, which okay. would trigger yeah, other significant trees. Right? Yeah. Other, yeah. Thanks for clarifying. Uh, no, but it's good. It's a good question. Yeah. All right, so we have a motion. So, can so I have a can, repeat can, on the can motion? Can the motion be repeated so Beth can actually? <laughs> 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 I make a motion to approve this with the amendment that we use the language five acres instead of four feet. 
feet of timber. Timber, so timber. Get that whole phrase. 25,000 more feet of timber. We're removing that and using five acres instead. And we're using the word trees instead of timber. Six. Six. Yeah. Six. Yeah. Six. Yeah. 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 All right. And we're voting okay. to support. So otherwise, we're going to support the addition of yeah to co-sponsor right. the co -sponsor. Yeah. amendment co of this ordinance. Okay. Right. So we have a motion. Beth, you got it. We're co-sponsoring. So we need a second. <laughs> second it. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. For, I, I appreciate your yeah. Thanks for the information. Sure. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we are going to move to the last okay. three smaller sections tonight. Um, so the subcommittee didn't meet because we were in holiday mode. <coughs> All right, that's true. Um, so, but right now we're on the neighborhood planting project and um, and the evaluation and, and the selection of the applicants. And, um, uh, I don't have my I don't have my little um, spreadsheet in front of me, but I have that in my mind's eye. And um, everyone had a chance to look at it, right? Rob, you added a few things. I, I added that the Prospect Street has the potential of setback trees in the extent that the sponsor, I guess, Ken, had gone and knocked on doors and found, it seems like, six potential good setback tree sites. But the, the issue is, he actually, I think, mentioned the paperwork. You never know when you're going to get the setback sites until okay. Rich signs them up. But those setback trees are potentially significant trees because they're in beautiful lawns, so they potentially will grow to be significant trees, okay. potentially. Does anyone have any further revisions to make to our spreadsheet? Are we happy with the way that we lay out the, the, the choices we have to do. Okay, yeah. so that is something that will carry on to the next one. So that's good, that's, a, that's an achievement. Um, what we can do is I can just first do a little straw poll of, of um, Prospect versus Monroe, and if it looks like it's a straightforward decision, then we don't have to belabor this. Um, if it looks like we're split in any way, then we can, depending on how much time we have, we can either discuss it or we can table it to the next one. Do we have enough time, if, if that's the case? To, to, to table, table it? To, to the next meeting? Oh, for it means like, oh the yeah. The decision. Yeah, I, okay. think, no, All I right. think we'll be fine. So let's just do a little straw vote, okay? This is this is not a formal vote, this is a straw vote. Who would be in favor of um, the Prospect Street project? But I live near there, so do I need to? You don't live on Prospect Street. <laughs> you don't live okay. on Prospect Street. I don't feel like you need to do a fair question. It just, okay. Not that it, we can add it in, but not in a formal way. Molly also. Yes. Don't be bad, she yes, thank you. Um, All right, so that was easy. <laughs> Nice. Um, now, uh, so so now we can turn that into a more formal um, vote if, if if there's no discussion that we feel like we need to have. Okay. There were small discussions. Okay, go ahead. There were certain sites on Monroe mm -hmm. that I thought were could easily just um, also get trees um, separate from this process, and that I I would like if. Monroe communicated with, I forget the name of the guy, uh, Wade, Wade, Wade. We communicated with Wade to say, look, we're not going to do maybe as extensive, but we are hoping to also plant trees on Monroe. Because I, I don't see, as we are doing planting ground town, that there's not enough trees to sprinkle some in there. Significant. Okay. I agree. I think that's important to go back to Wade, who make the effort and pick some good spots there. Yeah, so definitely not oh, the trees there too. Trees, but no, we're not making this up. Um, one other way of considering that is 
you know, I think I know I know what he personally obviously is my neighbor, and I encouraged him and supported him in the process. Um, but one thing to consider is if he was very excited about the community building aspect of this. Mm. So that might not be the the proposal that he bites at most enthusiastically. It might be more interesting to go back and say, you know, thank you for submitting. We want to, you know, we want to consider this for the next round. Um, you know, can we work with you to fine tune the application? Um, you know, I, I think that that, I think that the effort that people take to submit an application, which is a lot, we know this, we know this from Ken too. Um, I, I personally think that it kind of um, puts them in a, in a favorable position for being considered in future years. Maybe not the decisive thing, but it does show you know, a certain level of um, proaction and you know, engagement that we want to encourage. We don't want people you know, leaving feeling like they have been uh, you know, not chosen. Well, so. well, yeah, but either way, maybe in future years or trees, you know, half a dozen trees, it's particularly the non underwire. The one trees that aren't underwire that are particularly appealing yes. to plant. Yeah. Yeah. And so getting that done is easy. Um, so, okay, so maybe it's a little compromise. So maybe it's a yes and yes we'd still like to we think that there's some great sites on the street to plant some select trees and we'd still consider this application in a further year yeah i think we got to spend a little time with him and, and rework the application with him yeah um act, actually doing some field work and looking at the locations because just rob and i drive doing the drive-by assessment um there's definitely places that can have some really nice trees planted there, and we maybe should give plant some trees there in good faith. Yeah. Or thank you for that. But we also want to work with you with this work, rework the application for resubmission next year, and we're also going to plant X, Y, and Z trees this year. Okay. So that way, there we're kind of giving him a little assistance or the neighborhood group some assistance. Yeah. But on the other hand, we have to be careful if we're going to do that. Then if we have two other neighborhoods that apply. And their and their application is spot on, spot on yeah. or it's substandard. Mm -hmm. So then, what kind of leg up do we right. have? To, what, what leg up are we obligated to help those other people to make sure that you know it's all? It's not going to be apples to apples, but our effort to our, our reach out to all of them needs to be apples to apples because we can't just say, okay, we're going to help Wade this spring, right? And he's already got six trees planted there from us, and plus we also helped him work his application. But then there's another out there from Ward yeah. Six that mm. doesn't have an application, has an application that's not as good as Wade's, but we've already put our own effort and energy into his application. That's all I'm saying. Uh -huh. So we I have do. to. I do. Luckily, there's a lot of us to spread, you know, yeah. spread our support yeah. around and. and uh, um, I, I, I think it's a good problem to have. It is a good problem to have, and I think the more effort that we can actually do this, um, the better off we are going to be in the long run. Because I think the more reach out that we do, and the more refinement, the better off we're going to be, and the more people mm -hmm. hopefully will be attracted yeah. to this process. All right. So um, to to move things along, I'm going to go ahead and ask someone to. Um, to make a motion, and and then we'll, there'll be a formal vote. And in the formal vote, I am recusing myself, so you can put me down as a thing. Um, and then um, I, you know, let's let's inform the, the possible. I'll make a motion that we make a decision on our community application process, and um, for this. Cycle choose the prospect project. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. There we go. That was easy. Wow. Big things done. Do you contact? Do you contact Ken or? Um. Will you contact Ken? Yeah. Okay. Great. 
All right, so we do not have a subcommittee report, so that's true. Marilyn, so that's all. <laughs> We're back on schedule. <laughs> Look at that. All right. Sure you have an update. I'll defer to Rob because I haven't really yeah, done much. I'll, I'll say this, we've also taken a break since uh, before Christmas until today. I think our first cruising will be this coming Tuesday. So we'll just resume it. Uh, it no, it won't be this Tuesday. No, not it won't be the 15th either. It'll be after that. I'm hoping not. I might. Okay, so coming up. We've taken a been happening, and there was a break, hiatus yes. for the holiday, yes. and, and it will resume. How are you? Do you have enough in your pruning team? We have we have too many. We, I can't say too many. We have more than adequate supply of people who are not <laughs> well, well trained, okay. as in relation to the percentage of people who have that are well trained. There's a, there's a yeah, lack of balance. Yeah, yeah. Very, very nice okay, way to put so, that so right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, <laughs> and we're, we're trying to address it. I think it'll take the whole year, mm -hmm. the rest of the year. Yeah, to, yeah, to, no, to, it's, it's not something it's, it's, it's not like planting. Right. It's not like planting. Yeah. It, 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 people, it's, it's a visual yeah. like the issues. It's, a, it's the species of tree. It's the location species, of, the tree, of the tree, the position of the tree. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's a lot of factors. So, it's a lot. Do you, so, do you need more? You need more people who can train. Yeah, you know, we need more people that are trained. Who are trained? Greg, do you have any thoughts about that? <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's <laughs> definitely. Volunteers? I mean, it, it's an art and a, and a science. Exactly. Um, yeah. More so a science, especially when you're going tree training. Um, yeah, I mean, what what kind of? Um, I, I'm assuming you guys are pruning young trees. Or, it's all about we, we have a couple of things. There are a pretty large stock of trees that are already like been in the ground for five, six years that didn't get to prune sort of before which began to work. And these trees are can, can be found in all over town, but didn't get them. We're trying to that and reach up and kind of correct them. It's difficult for us volunteers because it's kind of high up and we're not about to But our our. In theory, we're just going to prune trees that have been planted in the last two, four, six years. Yeah. And so you can do it from the ground, you know, maybe we'll, we'll So since fall, how many have you done? This fall? Approximately. So far. Since the fall. We've done all of Warren's fields, so there's, I don't know, 40, maybe 40 trees. Yeah, we've been out in Florida Field, whether, I don't know if you know Florida Field, but it's, it's got trees that are hard as six inches. Oh, so this is on the fields or is this publishing trees? No, this is on the fields. So we, we, we decided to go there because they all those trees needed to have young tree trains and some of them ended up being removals. And but we, we, but we it's, prefer it's, to get the trees it's a good place to train take care of it when they're like two inch, three inch, four inch trees. And so and we, we're going to have an increasingly large crop of those because we just planted two years ago, 250. You know, we, the trees we planted are. Yeah. And, and so, so five years from now, we potentially could have upwards well, of like twelve hundred or thirteen hundred trees that we're going to have to do young tree trains on. So, right. we've developed this uh, core group of folks that actually are are trained to prune, and then Rob and I uh, actually work with them two or three times a week. Uh, and work with them and take. We have, have a couple of uh, good orchard ladders, and we supervise them. So there's. So there are 20 people who have been through trainings, or they've come, they've had an hour or two of instruction, and then an hour or two of working with Rich or Bob Goss or somebody. So we're, but it turns out that when you do that, you don't necessarily get somebody instantly, automatically to come and work on them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something you already know. Oh, yeah. I wonder if Christina could offer to. She could help we, train sure, we, more. We could, we could always ask. I mean, I think the thing that I'm, the only thing that I can say that I'm concerned about is that this is something that these folks don't do for a living. Yeah. So it, it for me, it's an art form in a essence. And you have to have some knowledge, some, some knowledge of how a tree grows. You know, you have to have a knowledge of what the actual species form and its natural form looks like. Mm -hmm. You have to identify what leader to remove, how far back to go, and they're just 
constant questions from people who are on the ground. So, I mean, it's, I don't ever foresee us actually allowing people to kind of go on their own. I think we're going to have this tight knit core group of people, you know, we'll have, it'll be revolving. We may be able to get another arborist uh, to volunteer their time. Um, you know, once the tree crew is up and running full, full staff, because I have some holes in it at the moment, we may have another lead arborist that actually would be willing to work with us during the daytime, oh. um, possibly. So, but I don't see us actually leaving, just having volunteers and saying, here, here's a bunch of pruning saws and we'll see you later, you know. Okay. Okay. I, I will mention Christina, you know, she oh, may yeah, have no, some no. students that are great. in their second year or something, yeah. and if you yeah. have, you know, a full year, a lot of exposure. Yeah. And if you can think of anyone who yeah. has the experience and wants to, even just a day, you know, I mean, it doesn't have to be a regular thing. If they're absolutely, I'd be, I'd be happy to help train and uh, you know, we can provide some. Um, you know, it, it, it always comes down to production. So, it, it, if there was, I mean, we, we could, I could volunteer a guy if we had a, a route that made sense so we could get, you know, gosh, we could print a lot of young trees. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if, it's, if it's organized, so you get a lot more bang for your buck. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'd be happy to work with you on that. You know, I could set aside a guy a day, you know, volunteer. And, uh, the, the more we route, the more information we give them, and mm -hmm. you know, we, we can knock out um, depending on how close those trees are. Um, you know, very quickly. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, young tree training is it's one of my favorite things. If I had more time, I'd, so I'd be there every Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Saturday mornings. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. And um, and what about uh, just one more question for Tree Northampton? It made me think of it because when we stopped planting trees, I missed planting trees, and I missed. Um, and I'm you know I'm not sure that I'm of a level of um, being able to prune, although I would love some training. But, um, you know, anybody can remove mulch. <laughs> and all, the ground is frozen now, so it's not a great time. But, you know, with climate change, the season is getting shorter and shorter where the ground is actually fully frozen. I'm wondering if that's a, a, a great use of people who still want to be engaged, but can't plan. Um, do you mean the, um, like the mulch removal? Volcano, volcano removal. mulch removal. Yeah. Um, not to disagree, but the people on. Village Hill. Village Hill, who've done a lot of that, did enjoy a certain level of supervision in deciding which roots to mm -hmm. chop off at the base of the tree, I mm -hmm. believe. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't want to just send people out, okay, go go um, forth, because they get complicated mm -hmm. because they're girdling, Yeah, and like, at what? Diameter, and I'm not a perfecter professional, but I. Although we come up, when is know, it a stem root? When is it the crown? The well, right the tree layer. planting comes up with a lot of those questions. Too. Yeah, <laughs> because it really you know, does. There's throwbacks, and there's a lot of circling. Yeah. So um, you know, I guess to some extent, we're going to face that in every area that we work. I wish it were easier, but um, it's definitely. There's a crew of about 30 people who rotated in and out of that group that have a lot of experience. And we have talked about, I mean, a lot of, some of the best people from that group are part of the pruning group now. But um, identifying places where that needs to be done. Are you talking about public shade trees? Or are you talking I'm, I'm more talking about the private about, properties? No, I'm talking about public shade trees. You know, I just happened to have walked my dog all the way down King Street the other day. And so I'm here. still keenly aware that Painful. the volcano mulches are still very much alive. So, Craig, you, you know, I mean, you know, amazing to us that volcano mulching is like standard among plants here. So, it's unbelievable. How, how is it that hey, you can't well, we yeah. use in a different field. Yeah. 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 Well, well, so, right. so for flashback ten years ago, I, mean, I, I was I was managing a large landscape company in Portland, Oregon. Um, we, we, we did tree work, but a lot of landscape work as well. Um, and I had a hundred guys that I, mean, I would do PowerPoint presentation. I would do prezies when those came out. I would do 
you videos, I mean, you name it, it was almost had to be like a weekly reminder um, when we do an install. Not to, to keep the lagoon up? Yeah, to, to the, the point where I, you know, my hands are just dirty because I'd just be walking around every single job after, you know, on the tail end of it, just going. Um, it, it's something that we include. Um, you know, if, if, if we do a young tree pruning and the, and the, and the soil's not frozen, we're going to expose that root flare. Right. Um, you know, at, at the minimum, and if we see a surface girdling root, I mean, our, all our trucks have um, you know root printing gear with them. Mm -hmm. um, we we'll, we'll take it a leg up, and you know, if there's a feature tree in somebody's front yard, and they're willing to invest a little in it, we'll we'll bring out the air spade, excavate all that soil out, mm -hmm. and um, uh, we're going to take it a step further. Um, the analogy I use is, you know, when you plant a tomato, you you buy, you know four bags of compost and you know but when you plant a tree you just stick it in the ground yeah. i mean we, we can mix in compost we can mix in biochar we can mix in great soil amendments uh we can do prescription fertilizer at that time and you know if we were able to get a soil test um and i mean we but bartlett's got a really amazing uh we would cut with root collar excavation is come out with the air spade with blast this expose the root flare so you end up lowering the surface level from a three or six inch yeah. diameter, six yeah. foot diameter. Have you ever seen an air spade in work? Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's an amazing machine. But, yeah. So you end up with a depression, essentially, it comes yeah. flat and then you create a depression. You do, you do create a depression, yeah, especially if the plant was planted too deeply right. or, or right. settled. So you're using it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I mean, when we plant a tree, I, I tell people plant high. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, yeah. We'll plant two inches high. Yeah. Um, yeah. And higher is better than deep. Um, but yeah. It, and we'll, we'll do root, so there's root crown excavation, which is basically for young trees. Uh, blast the soil away, expose that root collar. It could be a depression. Oftentimes it is a depression yeah. going down. Uh, the, the next step up would be a root collar, uh, a root invigoration is where we're actually using that air spade to go out a certain diameter away from the trunk of the tree. It could be a large sugar maple we go 12 feet out on. You know, if it's got turf underneath it. Oh, you're using the air spade to, to, using the air spade open, up the to open up the soil um, and incorporate good organic matter six, eight inches down into the soil profile. And that's where biochar comes in play, and you know, we can, we can get creative with fertilizers and lime or, 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 or whatnot. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a process that requires light. It's a dirty job, um, it's a very dirty job. But uh, I mean, it's fun, uh, and yeah, I mean, tree, trees thrive uh, afterwards. Um, Rock and Rich have worked with about thirty volunteers to do about eighty trees in one section of town that were. On Bill Hill, we removed the uh, we we removed the volcano mulch and we do a lot of root work. You that kind of or visit you, you get all that fibrous roots. Yeah, it's all fibrous. But what we don't do, you know, we create slight depressions, but we haven't created anything significant. Mm -hmm. uh, so we give, whenever we give up, if we don't get to the ground yeah. at a certain level, because we don't have air space, but also we're not. You run out of room? We're, you know, we're not certain. We, we These are tree belts that we want depressions in tree belts. Yeah, 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 yeah there's different, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Nothing is sophisticated, but. Yeah. Probably yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a it's a problem coast to coast. Uh, yeah, yeah, everywhere, everywhere, every, everywhere you go, everywhere I've ever been on vacation, you're gonna find a, a mulch volcano somewhere. Uh, <laughs> and and I've had customers, you know, large customers who have done extensive root color excavations, only to have the landscaper come by a month yeah. later. And, back in. Yeah. And, you know, they just installed sixty yards of mulch everywhere. And come. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And burying them so deep, that it just seems amazing that we that we have a, a, a society that just takes that doesn't learn. Yeah, uh, and, do that. And, and a lot a lot of the issues I find go back to the nursery too. Who, who, yeah, deliver it. Yeah. Delivered it. I mean, yeah. people think exactly. that that's the great. I mean, yeah. I've, I've had some root balls you can go eight so inches true. Um, oh, down, regularly. and and it's like wow, here, here's the yeah. flare. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the root ball between the plant. Yeah. Well, and yeah. Well, it's one of our big, like it, it's one of our biggest struggles. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's one of our struggles too. Yeah. Well, Thanks for sure. Bear root helps with that. Bear root is. You buy a bear root tree, you know where the root flare is. Bear root is the way to go. Uh, absolutely. For uh, so we we find that we can plant a certain number of bear root trees on a certain day, um, like. Uh, 
you know, whatever it is, 30 something um, we have capacity. We, we're looking for ways to, to be able to maybe put them in the water and treat, you know, keep them cold. And, you know, some way of extending parts. Yeah, okay, so you're just so you order a bunch of them and by the time you get to them, they're kind of... We try and do it within a day or two. Yeah. And so we, that's our limitation. Mm -hmm. What is the other product that we talked about that is popular in the South? The premium... No, that's... that's oh, that's just that's a different... It's just a way of growing them, but yeah. we still end up with trees. And we, I don't know if you've probably seen, we plant a lot of trees that mm -hmm. are in grow bags. Mm -hmm. And so they're lighter weight and, mm -hmm. and smaller. That's our sort of alternative to yeah. To, and you know, I mean, I'm, I'm also um, you know root uh, root manipulation at planting time. I mean, yeah. don't yeah. be afraid to sow the roots. Yeah. I mean, just just cut them right out of there. Um, I mean, I, I've, I've really beaten up trees, and uh, partly done a lot of research on um, root ball manipulation and yeah. I mean, videos of guys taking axes. To trees, you know, two two inch caliber red maples with you know just riddled with girdling roots, and uh, we've done a lot of research. You know, plant fifteen of these, you know, undisturbed root balls. Right. Fifteen of these with literally taking an axe and yeah. in three years' time, the ones that uh, that were hit hard with it. Yeah, believe me, you, it sounds like bones are breaking. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's, it, we it's, saw. And then probably in twenty years' time. You know, their, their tree, survivability. Tree is yeah, right. yeah. It sets them back a year, yeah. a year or two. Sure, sure. Uh, but it, it's the same in grace as yeah. far as longevity. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They use the axe for uh, demonstration purposes because mm -hmm. it was okay. a lot. Right. I, I prefer to use a softball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Did for, I cut off your question about how we were looking to put them in cold storage? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we are, just so you know, we are looking. It is one of our things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, we did at one point think we had a cold storage that was adequate, but it would turn up the tree was too big. It would just fit. It would fit, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that, that is, uh, you, you gotta, you almost gotta rally the troops and order a lot and, you know, have an organized planning and uh, it, yeah. it make, capitalize on that narrow window yeah. and, and just mud them in. I mean, that, that's, well, you, you gotta really, really soak those guys in if you go bare root. Uh, that, that's what I find is sometimes a limiting factor with bare root. Having uh, easy access to water. The city, yeah. our city. But We're good. you know, timing is everything. And I think we found that fall is a much better time too. In spring, you have the risk of like a sudden heat wave, and we yeah. got nailed the first time we tried. Um, I, I'm going to move this along, but it sounds like you know you two you all connections because you all have a lot of great knowledge to to exchange. Um, all right, so any other business not anticipated by the chair? I am not thinking of any. Something I'm supposed to remind me. Oh, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. But then I have to remember what you're supposed to Oh, you're the, you, this is a, I, I've got to remember. Oh, we both know, and we can't remember what it is. God, we're oh, we're so 50. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, it was some, I it's care. It's an event. Person, place. Yeah. A tree. Oh, uh, the uh, Emerald Ashbore. Oh, was that it? I think okay. that was that was the email we got from Barrel of Angie. Okay, I know, but I don't remember if that's the thing that I said remind me to tell you. So. Anyway, um, okay, I can tell we got it. We got a outreach from I don't even know who she's with. She works for. Is she with the state? No, she does not. She works for a private company. Oh, okay. Who who wanted to know if we had interest in hosting an EAB training in Northampton? Mm -hmm. Melissa. And um, Melissa, sorry. I, I, I prior to your presentation, <laughs> uh, we had said no. Um, one of the things you might want to know is that. As soon as we learned that EAB landed in Northampton, we looked at our recent tree inventories we had, yeah. and realized that we actually have very few specimen EA, um, elm tree, sorry, ash, ash trees, trees in um, our inventory. So we didn't we didn't feel the need to race to address something. It, it's it's actually only makes up like four or five percent, yeah. maybe even less. 
You're fortunate. Yeah, we that are. Is, yeah, you're fortunate. I, and yeah, Germany, I mean, I've seen an ash tree here and there. They're I mean, yeah. Arcadia has a lot of them. Yeah. Well, I think that when I talked to the state person, they said that it's moving up the Connecticut. Right. Yeah. 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 They're natively up more. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the, they have land so, trees. They're in Berkshire, yeah. they're in Vermont, and they're all over, they're all over Connecticut. Yeah, that's where they found it along yeah. the Connecticut. Yeah. Border. And to, um, as far as as hosting and training, I did I didn't personally feel like I have the capacity to to organize. We already did. Jay organized one. Was is he what she on here? Oh, Jay Gerard. Jay Gerard yeah. organized an a, 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 a training. Okay. Yeah, was it in Florence? I no, no, or, no, no. It was the following no. year. It was I don't know. So it was I, the spring. I I'm kind of. I feel the same way Lily does. There is so much, there's so much information just in here alone, and there's so many trainings about Emerald Ash Borer. I've been to mm -hmm. so many of them. There's not really. We can refer people. To we them. can refer people to them if they're interested, yeah. but I don't think us actually hosting one here mm -hmm. makes is going to make a whole heck of a lot of sense because there are so many outlets out there that are available. Every tree warden's dinner I go to, there is uh, a 20 minute, 15, 20 minute talk on pests, and that's the major one at the moment. Uh, other, other gypsy moth as well. Okay. But I, I don't think I'm, I'll be to respond to her and tell her thank you very much, but no thank you. Okay. Um, else yeah, there's probably something else we talked about earlier, but I just don't remember. Oh, I see in the minutes, Richard said you had mentioned that there would be a graduate student in forestry from UMass. Yes, I, yes, and I'm going to try to get him uh, pinned down to a date and time that he okay. can come and explain his uh, his thesis uh, program, his thesis theory, based around volunteers and pruning and how long it takes to train a volunteer. Basically, you give it a little test. You're going to give a volunteer a little test of what to cut off of this, you know, basically a, a silhouette and then an arborist and see who and weigh the two against each other. Yeah, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it sounds like from your email, Rich, that you forwarded that it might be another four months even before we care about the grant? Yes. And to not expect full um, yes. grant because yeah. they have a very competitive cycle. Yes. So we may. So we might. Yes. So we're gonna. We, well, regardless, okay. I think we're gonna go forward with the with the public shade tree plantings, you know, on tree belts and so forth. What is, when they partially fund, do we get to choose what part of the project we do? No. They tell us. Uh -huh. Yes. And they'll very likely choose the surface soil part. That's that's my guess because it's cutting edge and there's education that can come out of it. Um, so we, we submitted a grant to DCR for um, a, a challenge bank, urban forestry challenge bank, to um, replace part of the parking lot down here that had some um, islands that have trees that are performing very poorly because of all compact and just uh -huh. terrible conditions, with structural soil and plant trees in, in that medium and make an, an, a workshop out of it for other arbors, actually, to learn how to plant in um, an urban environment. Yeah, so if we get that, we'll let you know. Do, do your folks have any of that? Yeah, well, um, biochar is like my go-to. Are you guys familiar with biochar? Yeah. Okay. yeah it, it works great for cities. Uh, wow. I use that a lot in Portland. Um, but yeah, it's just keeping those feet off them. Uh, college campuses and cities are the worst. Yeah. The foot compaction is horrible. Everywhere you go, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's neat. Okay, it's neat. Great. Are these engineered soils or yes. okay? Yeah, it's called it's called CU Soils. Uh, Cornell University um, patented this type of. It's a gravel soil. Um, yeah, yeah. Medium. You're always trying to, you know, mix that. It would be nice to be able to purchase that, or you know, you're always trying to mix some kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah they have a sweet spot apparently. Oh, cool. Sweet mixture. All right, I think that's it for uh, any other business. So we're on to to do's. Um, we'll start with Rob. To do? Yeah. Just keep pruning. <laughs> right on. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I, I, the um, guy I'm trying to contact uh, in Chicopee Planning Department um, has, was away, so I'll, I'll catch up with him this week. Hopefully. Yeah. 
So I'm going to contact uh, Mr. Nyman about the award for the tree for the neighborhood tree planting program. Mm -hmm. um, my only question, and we can discuss this later, but we never addressed how we're going to. I guess we probably should talk at another meeting about how we're going to talk to Wade. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. that will have to be. But I will allow Ken that knowledge. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, speak with Carolyn and get those drafted changes to you all. Of, uh, the uh, amendments to the three, the uh, ordinance section three fifty. And will you uh, specifically reach out to Todd, or do you want me to? No, I, I'll reach out to him. Okay. I'll do it tomorrow. Um, continue pruning with Rob, but also Rob, we're, Rob and Alicia and I are going to go to Amherst Nursery tomorrow to tag some trees. So now that we have uh, a little mission critical place to plant, we're, we're also waiting to hear from another the Bear Root Chestnut Ridge Nursery up in New York. Which I have to email that person as well. Plus a whole bunch of other things. Mm -hmm. You end every meeting with that. <laughs> well, you know, the list just keeps growing. So. Sue, so, on to you. Um, nothing's been identified, but I need to get emailing volunteers um, to let them know when the pruning is and we want to set up an online poll for that too. I also gave you a to-do list. I sent you an email. Oh, you did? I'm yeah. sorry. That's okay. All right. And if you're doing another I'm trip, still end of earring in development. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My development time. If you do another um, young tree training, pruning training? Yes. Uh, I'd like to include it in that. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Just, well, there's I'm so many of They're all trainings. No. No. There's the more formal workshop sessions. Yeah. And well, then I mean, there's... it's been most of the people that have been with us are the same people that we've had yeah. well, well, since the beginning of December. But they start it with. But that doesn't mean you can't just show up and oh, yeah. just go to a tree and spend some time with you. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so the format that we try to have is that when people first start, that there's actually a time when instead of them actually working, they're standing there. And Rich or Bob Goss explained to them what, what what about the tree and about the goal, and they'll see them in one tree for an hour or two. Mm -hmm. That I think that which I consider the, the training and workshop. Then, well, I consider it all the training, right? That's the training yeah. workshop. It's it's all after that, because every every it's tree you walk up to, there's something yeah, that's yeah, wrong right. with it. Uh, <laughs> after that, we disperse, <laughs> and, 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 and we actually start working on the trees. Okay. Does that so, give you a better idea? So I was going to put up so, a doodle poll type yeah, thing. Yeah. So you're saying you would come to just that? And I'd absolutely include you. Yeah. No, I think I just need to put my time in. Yeah. Yes, yeah. okay, that's different. Yeah, that's, yeah. Putting one time in is what everyone's doing now. And I haven't been able to do it this season, but in the season I was able to do it, it was a lot of people looking at it from different angles and discussing. Yeah. identifying the most important scaffolding features and then talking about you know, a lot of conversation about it consensus okay I'll, I'll invite you thank you well if possible before the next meeting the subcommittee ought to meet yeah. but with molly's mom she might not be able to make it i don't know yeah okay. 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 all right probably you yeah. know we'll see how it goes all right, same thing. I'll be meeting with the subcommittee to um, fine tune the plan for next year and maybe work, work for the next for the next one. Yeah. yeah. So we start giving a year ahead Definitely. of um, our um, our plan. All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. No, you gotta make it. Yeah, so moved. Is, is a second. Oh, you're making a motion. No, I, I'm asking for a motion to adjourn, and she said so, so moved. So moved. All right. So that's her making the motion, and Sue seconded second. it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Meetings adjourned.